Brutal Mode EX Plus presents so many new zombies and obstacles that are extremely tough to beat, but something I haven't done before is to play Survival Endless. Survival Endless is the true test as to the skill of the player to whether they can create a defense which defends, well, endlessly. With so many new zombies and their abilities, like freezing zombonies and zombies that heal other zombies, is it even possible to survive indefinitely in this extremely tough mod? The goal of this video is to answer this question. Is it possible to get past Flag 50 of Brutal Mode EX Plus, which is when the spawn rate of zombies maxes out? Stick to the end to find out because this video is 4 months in the making and it gets quite insane. First, we need to set up our early game. We need to make use of these two flags to quickly construct defenses while the waves are not too difficult for us yet to farm up sun. I opted for Cattail as it is the most cost efficient early game and serves as cleanup in the late game. I also brought in Planter which doubles the DPS of our Cattails. Meanwhile, stockpiling sun will be extremely important in Endless because upgrade plants will cost more for each one we plant, so I went ahead and planted 4 columns of sunflowers. However, our first problem would be present immediately. I tried setting up gloom shrooms, but I quickly regret not bringing a single stall plant, because bucketed masses quickly overwhelm our cattails. There were a few mishaps here and there, but we managed to barely defend it all after losing a ton of sunflowers. Onto flag 3 and 4, I tried to salvage this position with melon bolts, but it's too late. The gramophone zombie keeps healing everything up, making our melon bolts basically useless. With constant blover stalling, I was able to survive for a bit, but it was pretty obvious that this is dead lost after the first flag hit and sent in 6 letter heads at once. So I tried again, but this time we are going to start off with melon bolts instead of gloom shrooms in the mid game as it was more reliable splash damage. And obviously, I wouldn't want to repeat my mistakes again, so this time I brought in Talna to make sure that I can block off zombies, and also brought Blover as a line of defense. Ending the first two flags, we had a much better defense than last time, with a melon pole in every row, but oh boy, the challenge only begins now. Newspaper Zombies. If you don't know how much of a pain they are to deal with, I think the video speaks the best for itself as to how ridiculous they are in Endless. Newspaper Zombies have more health in Brutal Mode EX+, so their newspapers actually break before a melon bolt can kill the zombie itself, triggering their rage mode. Things are already looking kind of bad, with two lanes of defense almost completely dead. Oh, but that isn't the worst of it yet. Trying to use Doom Shroom as a way to clear out the horde of newspaper zombies is a really bad idea. Okay, so time for a new plan. For my third attempt, I'm going to adapt from the dump strategy by sacrificing lawnmowers as early game defense and then simply using garlics to divert zombies. This allows us to rake up sun much faster, and not only that, this supports the fact that we can use fume shrooms as a much more efficient form of damage. I set up two gloom shrooms in column 4 and simply used the pumpkin to block off any zombies, and that worked out actually pretty well, and farmed up a ton of sun to work with for the next flags. Flag 3 to 4 was inbound, and this time there were football zombies and bungee zombies, so naturally I brought in the umbrella leaves. Football zombies are just a load of health, so I opted for Winter Melon to slow them down for our gloom shrooms to do the rest of the heavy lifting. This all worked out pretty well, and I continued using garlic to divert zombies into one row, which helped us keep our sun production for longer, and things were looking really good this run. Ending the level, we have 10,000 sun to work with, and things were looking really up here. However, things are about to turn for the worse very quickly. Zombonis freeze most plants surrounding them, which means all the sunflowers in the front have to be dug up as they will just get frozen. Not only that, we have to prepare for their massive health which we don't have enough damage for yet as one winter melon isn't even close to enough damage against them. I then also replaced the single targeting cattails which by now are kind of obsolete with cop cannons to add more damage and help in defending against Zombonis. However, I quickly realized why it's pretty obvious that spike rocks will not be reliable at all against Zombonis and Endless. 
I completely forgot that spike rocks will just end up getting blown up by jack in the box zombies, so they're basically useless here, and it's a pretty quick defeat if I've seen one. To dispel any potential inaccuracies from my testing regarding jack in the box zombies, I decided to try spike rocks again and put them on the ninth column to see if I can kill them in time. I repeated the same early game as before, but I can confidently say with all certainty that using spike rocks is definitely a bust because it won't be able to prevent jack in the box explosions. I tried using Imitator Ice Room to suppress Jack explosions in another attempt, but that was just not worth it because Gargantua still just ravished the Spike Rocks down in no time at all. I am very confidently saying that Spike Rocks are most definitely not worth it. Oh yeah, but thankfully, I actually managed to survive here even with newspaper zombies. But I was quickly met with death when the Buckethead zombies came in and completely rolled over our defense because frankly, it's impossible to break through multiple pumpkin zombies. Multiple pumpkin zombies create an unbreakable wall, as they will keep adding Bucketheads to each other while healing every zombie around them up, making Letterheads near unkillable. As if Gargantuars weren't enough of a bust against Spike Rocks, there's also this problem that I found out in my next run where I still try to use Spike Rocks. Digger zombies can outright eat your spike rocks from under the ground, and spike rocks are considered root plants and can therefore be eaten by the digger zombie. Not only that, pumpkins also count as a root plant, and therefore means that we can't even use pumpkins to protect our plants in the back anymore since diggers will just eat them up one by one. Granted, pumpkins do explode on death, but spending 200 sun on every digger zombie is definitely not an economically viable option to stay alive for 50 flags here. Ending this section here with less than 200 sun to work with, this is certainly a loss ready, so I'm going to skip to the next run here. Now knowing that digger zombies eat pumpkins straight up, there is no use in actually using gloom shroom anymore because we will be using a different plant to counter them later. This is why in this next run I started just using winter melons as the primary line of defense to set up initially instead of gloom shrooms, still using garlics for maximum sun production. The next session is incoming, and this time it has ladder zombies and newspaper zombies. With a little bit more thought in mind, Imitator Ice Room is actually really good here to just stop newspaper zombies. With a combination of tall nuts and pumpkins, I was able to successfully barricade against the newspaper zombies to stop them from infiltrating much further early on. However, as we know it, ladder zombies are in these two flags, and their appearance quickly makes our tall nuts and pumpkins completely useless. With only one Winter Melon, it is not nearly enough damage to stop ladder zombies before they just make quick work of all our defensive wall plants, so it's necessary to find another solution. With 7 failed attempts and all of them yielding nothing of much value, something has to change with the strategy we're using to make it more effective. I contacted my friend Saman for some advice. He has a lot of experience in survival endless setups, so he will help us find what we're doing wrong right now to get the most optimal setup. I sent him a screenshot of my defense, and he had a lot to say about what was going wrong here because I was certainly not setting up properly. First of which, less cattails. They were just single targeting glorified repeaters which don't deal nearly as much damage as melon pulse or fume shrooms, so I need less of them. Second of which, doom shroom is a necessity, but not imitated. Given it's a field nuke, doom shroom has always been effective and has a wide variety of applications. However, the drawback of its crater lasting twice the time it did as in vanilla means that there is likely no space to use Doomstream in for survival endless, so we should be using just one. The third of which, I need Imitator Ice Shroom Cycle. Ice Shroom is especially strong as endless because you're slowing the level down to let all instants come back from cooldown. Moreover, Ice Shroom doesn't make a crater and its effect is something that we want. Grouping all zombies up together for a massive splash value is the way we can kill mass healers in one go. After being enlightened with this newfound knowledge, I went back to playing Survival Endless a day later. My goal this time is to make it to at least 10 flags. Instead of going for multiple cattails, I'm just going to be using one cattail as early game defense. That's all I'm going to do because I'm going to be focusing on Melon Pulse much more. Melon Pulse were what I was massively missing out on for the splash damage against a wide range of threats like newspaper zombies and ladder zombies, just to name a few. I'm now also using Planter to buff the damage of all melon pulse in the ground, and making sure I also have Winter Melons in the water to counter Lily Pass Thorkel Zombies. I've not also moved up all my Twin Sunflowers to just the 4th column, safe from any bungee ambushes from the target zombies that get more plentiful the later the rounds go. With two columns of melon pulse getting buffed by Planterns, this setup will hopefully prove itself in the upcoming flags. 
Black Freedom of Ford is here, and Pogo Zombies are coming, which is the perfect time to start setting up Tall Nuts. Tall Nuts will not only block off Pogo Zombies, but also Newspaper Zombies later. And here, we can already see the difference having Melon Bolts makes. The masses of Conet Zombies are getting vaporized by the second, melting like butter. I also brought in Cop Cannon, but mind you, I'm only placing it there, as this is the only safe Cop Cannon spot that doesn't just instantly get killed by Bungie Ambush Zombies. I end off these two flags with a massive wall of tall nuts, and this setup is basically done already, apart from the pumpkins on every plant now to protect ourselves from imps. The next two flags have newspaper zombies, and frankly, I sure really comes in clutch to help with them. Newspaper zombies move at such fast speeds which melon bolts often miss them. However, with the help of Ice Room and Imitator, they can be easily killed thanks to freezing them in place for a melon pulse to unleash their massive damage onto them. This was so effective, in fact, I didn't even lose a single Tall Nut during these two flags. A net positive sun return of 2700 is absolutely massive here. Next up, we have Catapult Zombies, so I brought in Umbrella Leaf to deflect their basketballs, and we easily counter Screen Door Zombies and Snorkel Zombies with Melon Pulse. Catapult Zombies, although not dying until they ran out of basketballs, won't do anything with our Umbrella Leafs protecting everything. We sail past these two easy flags with Umbrella Leafs. At the end of these two flags, I also set up the remaining Umbrella Leafs to defend against Bungies. Next wave, it's Digger Zombies, which you may look at this defense and say there is zero Digger Zombie defense, but the cool thing is that this already defends against Digger Zombies. The way to counter Digger Zombies is the same as Newspaper Zombies. Tall Nuts are considered a root plant, so Digger Zombies will stop in front of a Tall Nut to eat it underground. Moreover, Tall Nuts will damage them because that's their ability in this mod, which is to damage zombies that eat it while healing back up very quickly. However, that's not the main problem this time around, it's with Buckethead Zombies. Target Zombies spawn a bungee ambush consisting of many types of zombies, ranging from pole vaulting zombies to gorgantuars and catapult zombies. They are by far, when I mean it, by far the worst zombie in survival endless, which probably causes 95% of the issues we have in a setup like this. Even though you can deflect bungee ambush zombies with an umbrella leaf, if target zombies spawn a catapult zombie, the catapult zombie will crush whatever plant is in its way. And that's an issue, because, well... Yeah, it crushes before an Umbrella Leaf can deflect it, making it absolutely devastating because even with Umbrella Leaf, you cannot stop them from instantly killing several plants. This mechanic of a bungee ambush being able to kill an Umbrella Leaf is literally more toxic than low tide in Big Wave Beach. And thank god, I actually even managed to survive past these two flags, because this was an absolute nightmare scenario and caused us to lose a ton of Tall Nuts. With that, we've already survived for 10 flags and successfully completed our goal. We still have plenty of sun to work with, so I'm feeling confident we can repair this defense. Now the next two flags aren't as bad. More newspaper zombies, so that calls for more tall nuts and more ice rooms. And also pole vaulters, but they already get countered by tall nuts. However, this next problem is a bit more irritating. Ball dolphin riders jump over tall nuts and can therefore leap straight to our pumpkins, which is really annoying, but we can't do anything. Gargantuars also appear for the first time naturally in this run, but without Giga Gargantuars, these folks aren't getting anywhere. They get completely destroyed by Melon Bolts. That basically concludes these two flags, and now we have more than 10,000 sun in reserve to work with, and things are looking up as the next two flags don't have that big of threats here. By Flag 13 of Endless and Brutal Mode EX+, the game is spawning equivalent to the maximum spawn rate of Vanilla, so the spawn rate density is getting quite wild by now. At this point, the difficulty won't increase until Flag 20, which is when tougher zombies start to come earlier in the level. Blazing past these two flags, these were a relative ease as we continue doing the instant kill cycle strategy. But in the next two flags, things aren't going to be pretty. Firstly, dancing zombies now mean that angry dancing zombies are coming in. They aren't just faster letterhead zombies, as they are immune to slowing from winter melons. Without Ice Shroom, it is not uncommon for angry dancing zombies to infiltrate deep into our defenses. We need to be extremely careful to not leak against these guys. With dancing zombies out of the way, Zombonis are still extremely dangerous, but Ice Shroom's buff to three Zombonis will be enough to give Melon Pulse ample time to kill them off. Frozen Tall Nuts is not a problem for us, as Tall Nuts still heal and do damage while frozen. That means that the Ice Shroom Cycle strategy will still work against Zombonis. However, as a consequence of using Potato Mines against Zombonis, that causes some Gravestones from Pole Vaulting Zombies, so now we need to use Grave Buster. The next two flags has the same falter zomboni combo, but also has Balloon Zombies. I spent the early game busting all the Gravestones from the previous wave to open up space. Balloon Zombies are quite plentiful, and we need to keep spending Blover to pop their balloons, since Cattail is too slow to deal with them all at once. Overall, same Ice Shroom Cycle strategy just like the level previous, and you're good to go! 
obviously remember to keep bringing tall nuts to defend against bigger zombies. However, here is our next problem. Immediately, things aren't going well. Your game charts are an umbrella leaf, a pole vaulting zombie vaulting over literal air and spawning a grave, a newspaper zombie in the water, you name it. I thought I'd like to take a quick pause here and talk about preventing bungee ambushes from target zombies in Brutal Mode EX+. Now I'm editing like 4 months after this has happened, and now I know you can prevent them from spawning any zombies if you just use an instant kill that disintegrates them while they are frozen by Ice Shroom. Disintegrating instant kills are like cherry bombs or doom shrooms. Obviously, I didn't know this when I was playing here, so let's just pretend that the zombie spawnings are unavoidable. Dealing with bungee ambush RNG is just a pain. Once an umbrella leaf gets crushed, we won't be able to block any more ambushes where the umbrella leaf used to be, which is detrimental. Thankfully, the good part about this is that as the level progresses, since we're at spawning limit, the amount of bucket at zombies decreases as they get replaced by other special zombies. However, that still doesn't stop me from losing a ton of defense here, as well as an ice shroom jack in the box zombie that stunned our plants that was spawned from a bungee ambush. And that actually costed us a lot more, which certainly cannot happen again. We did survive, but look at the next two flags here. Giga Gargantuars as well as Bucketed Zombies. Target zombies combined with Giga Gargantuars will be the true test as to whether this defense can hold its own. In addition to that, we're now on Flag 20, meaning special zombies will now start spawning sooner in every level as well. Before even the first flag, things are already not looking too great as the early target zombies have caused some serious damage to our tall nuts and we are dangerously close to dying. Thankfully, we are holding our own with our imitated ice shrooms and barely holding off these zombies with our tall nuts that are dying extremely quickly to thicker zombies. The first Giga Gargantua comes in our top lane and now we need to be extremely careful as a load of zombies is infiltrating our defenses. Thankfully, Doomshroom is back just in time. With a massive stack of pumpkin zombies sealing everything up, it's almost impossible to clear out zombies without instance. Thankfully, Melon Pulse do enough to stop all the zombies, and now we just Doomstrom at the final wave again to clear out the horde. We took about 2000 sun worth of damages in this insanely difficult flag, and looking to recover in the upcoming flags. Unfortunately, the next two flags is Giga Gargantuars again, so we're going to suffer a bit more. On the other hand, I brought in Twin Sunflower just so I can recover some of my sun producers. Without the imitated Ice Shroom stall strategy, we would have almost certainly died. Even then, I only barely clinged on to life in these two flags after planting two Twin Sunflowers back, and Tall Nuts are still basically half damaged here. The next two flags bring back Buckethead Zombies, and thankfully we only lost one Umbrella Leaf, and we didn't lose that much sun as before, but still with a damaged Tall Nut lineup here, things aren't looking that great. If I wanted to make it to Flag 50, I know we needed to reach as much sun production as possible, it was risky to not bring an additional instant kill at this point, but I'm going to have to gamble or lose later. I brought in some flower to try and get some extra sun while trying to recover my taunt wall, which is in shambles. But along with Zamboni freezing and crushing plants, I was unsuccessful in attempting to building up any large number of sunflowers. However, I still managed to end the level with more sun than going into it, so I'll take that as a W, and we move on to the next flag here. With no Gargantuars or Buckethead Zombies, makes this the perfect opportunity to rebuild my Umbrella Leaves, as well as get Sun and plant Tall Nuts. We managed to get through actually very well by building back almost every single Tall Nut as well as plant Sunflowers and didn't lose any Sun while we're rebuilding a lot of our Tall Nuts here. We're now officially 30 flags in and still standing strong. Now with the next two flags sending in more Buckethead Zombies, we didn't actually have that much trouble making past this with our huge Tall Nut walls holding the Zombies off. At this point, it seemed like we were unstoppable. We were still making a sun profit even with Buckethead Zombies almost every level now, but we're still going strong. The next two flags had no Bucketheads, so I saw this as my opportunity to gamble and try to make some sun back. I debated on the seed selection for about 5 minutes for whether to bring Blover or not, and I gambled by not bringing it to have Sunflower instead. Initially, I tried using a Doomstrom on the 6th column to hit the zombies, but somehow it got frozen by a nearby Zamboni I wasn't aware of, which is a costly mistake. However, Ice Shrooms were still good enough so I was fine even after wasting a Doom Shroom and also replanted some of our sun production, so the gamble to not bring Blover pays off. Dinker Zombies appear alongside Giga Gargantuas in the next two flags, and Dinker Zombies are extremely hard to deal with here as Gargantuas can keep smashing down our Tall Nuts. We had to spend some pumpkins on the Dinker Zombies, but not too many of them as they didn't reach as far as into our Twin Sunflowers, so we are still getting by barely. 
That being said, we still lost Sun overall as we experienced our first losses on our Melon Pulse Pumpkins, finally taking too much damage from Imps and we need to start replacing them. 38 flags in, and here even with our Gargantuars or Buckethead Zombies, we are starting to get new issues. Between every zombie that we need to counter with Tall Nuts, it's getting a little bit too much. Newspaper Zombies and Digger Zombies are about to whittle down our Tall Nuts together very quickly, and we are getting dangerously close to losing now that the Digger Zombies have broken through the bottom. Nevertheless, we managed to survive and keep our Melon Pulse safe still, only losing our Twin Sunflowers, but we're down to just 3,800 Sun in our reserves here, which is not that much. By now, we are 80% through the challenge, 40 flags completed. However, we are on the verge of losing with not enough sun to replenish Tall Nuts and Pumpkins. I bring in Sunflower to try and turn a profit. I also get rid of some of the safety Tall Nuts in the water here to try and make more sun so I can increase my reserves. As risky as it is, I don't even try and bring Umbrella Leaf to repair my dead Umbrella Leaf and even lose a lot more to plant more Sunflowers, but it pays off here with 1000 sun profit. Now the next two flanks are going to be extremely bad. Newspaper zombies alongside Buckethead zombies and Giga Green Antwars absolutely scream for maximum instant kills. With absolutely insane amount of Buckethead zombies, the bunchy ambushes are absolutely brutal here. At this point, all my efforts in trying to even turn a profit on my sunflowers seem completely impossible as seemingly this is where the cookie crumbles. It's just extremely difficult as I don't even kill off all Giga Green before the next two flags come. We're starting to fall behind to the zombies and endless and it doesn't look good. With both digger zombies and newspaper zombies again, the end is certainly near now. I don't even have two tallness in most lanes to help defend off all these zombies. I try my best to hold them off, but one by one, my pumpkins get picked off by the digger zombies and now in the top lane it's getting dangerously close to losing my final line of melon pulse. Even Zombonis are making it too far as newspaper zombies are rushing to the front of the horde to protect them, destroying almost every last bit of sun production that I have. With only 400 sun going into the 46th flag, it's safe to say that this is too far gone to recover at all with digger zombies coming in again and all hopes are gone. I just accept my imminent death to the balloon zombie by letting it fly through. This was absolutely devastating as the past 2 hours just went down the drain and we have to restart. However, with some more optimizations, it seems like our ambitious goal of 50 flags might not be so out of reach at this point. So I've begun another endless run. Repeating the same strategy for the early game, I get basically the same setup as before with some minor improvements. Instead of getting two columns of tall nuts in the water, I am now also greeting much harder with four additional twin sunflowers from War Sun Production to stock up more sun for the future here. I set up my cop cannon as well as bring Imitator Pumpkin to protect my entire defense against everything and set up most of the long term defense. And thankfully, I did that just in time because the next two flags ain't pretty. Return of Bucketed Zombies means that I have to stop greeting and set up Tall Nuts. I can say they were insanely brutal as they took out the majority of my Twin Sunflowers by simply landing Catapult Zombies on top of my plants here. With a lot of damage to repair early on, it was not a great start to our endless run but I managed to replant all my Sunflowers in an easy two flags. Despite Giga Gargantuars immediately coming at Flag 10, just the imitated Ice Shrooms instant cycle can easily beat these two flags by repeating what we've done already. However, Newspaper Zombies come in the next two flags, and I only have one column of Tall Nuts right now, making me go panic and spend a few pumpkins up front as explosives. It was close, but not too bad. With the help of imitated Ice Shrooms, I only lost one Sunflower here, and with 12,000 Sun in the bank, things are looking great for us this time around. However, Bucketed Zombies return again and we take a massive damage in the two water lanes as Catapult Zombies crush all our Sunflowers and possibly all our hopes. I kept hopeful as we were still making a profit every two flags right now, and even with the loss of several Sunflowers, it seemed to be fine for us. The next flag was just Newspaper Zombies and Giga Gargantuars as well as Zombonies, but they aren't that big of a deal anyways because we have two columns of Tallnut now, so we make it past these two flags relatively easily. Flag 19 to 20 had bucketed zombies, but thankfully nothing bad spawned from target zombies at all, so we were completely fine here. Even with digger zombies, we had enough tallness to hold them off, so we managed to profit up to 14,000 sun worth of reserves here. Now the problems are a bit more pronounced 20 flags in, as more digger zombies start eating up our tallness, so I had to spend about 500 sun of reserves these two flags in an instance. The next two flags were more of the same zombies, diggers and newspapers again, so our sun reserves were starting to take a bit of a hit with us not replanting sunflowers for a while now. Next two flags even sent bucket of zombies, which are even more of a problem now as they completely ravaged down the water lanes and I continue to have no time to replant sunflowers. They even take out my other twin sunflower in the water, and down to just the four last sun producers, we are struggling to keep up with the zombies. 
With us draining some basically every level here, things are not looking great. But then came this. Oh my god! These two flags from 27 to 28 are absolutely massive as there are no threatening zombies other than just digger zombies. With absolutely no threat of Buckethead Zombies or any Gargantuars, we were able to use Grave Busters and also replant all my sun production to replenish our reserves. This was absolutely massive as I needed to get more sunflowers desperately, and this was just the wave to help us do that. Ending off the level, we had turned a 1000 sun profit this level. Without the presence of Bucketheads, we can keep turning a profit on our sunflowers despite needing to spend sun on instant kill cycling on newspaper zombies and Gargantuars. We end these two flags making a profit of 2,500 sun, bringing us back to a safer zone of our reserves. Flag 31 to 32 is yet another easy two flags, with catapult zombies again which help stall out the level length thanks to their ability to stay alive infinitely until their basketballs run out. Without even Gargantuars to worry about, I easily pocketed another 1,500 sun in the bank worth of profits. Hello there. After several easy flags, the Buckethead Zombies finally make their return, and this time almost instantly ruin all our toilets within just one flag of time. All the sunflowers we replanted were basically gone now, and we even lost almost all our twin sunflowers in these two flags because of the number of target zombies that spawn catapults. The next two flags afterwards seemed hopeless to try and recover this defense, as we can't even get back any sun production with newspaper zombies and Buckethead Zombies again. We end off the 36th flag with literally only one sun sunflower, with only two tallness left standing and 5,800 sun. This is looking bleak. I seized the opportunity of the next flag to build back sunflowers no matter what because we are definitely going to run out of sun planting ice streams if we didn't plant sunflowers. But with us having to contest against bucket of zombies still here, we were losing a lot of sun even with us building back sunflowers, and we're down to just 1,700 sun now. The next two flags sends Bucketed Zombies again, and at this point, it's just me clinging onto dear life and trying to stay alive as much as possible against target zombies. We survived flags 39 to 40 somehow, which I still don't know how, but I suppose the good RNG has finally helped us out. Flag 41 definitely had something else to say, because yet another level with Bucketed Zombies, this is certainly a loss here. And yeah, nothing more to do other than watch ourselves get completely steamrolled by the infinite stream of zombies. With another fail in the book, there must be another way to optimize this. In the next attempt, I try and optimize by using two gloom shrooms in the fourth column. My plan was that these gloom shrooms will let us not need to replant pumpkins as glooms will clean up imps. Not only that, it will also clean up ball off and rider zombies that jump to the front. The rest of the defense is just the same as before, but this setup means we have two less sun producers skipping ahead, and honestly, I can say that this did actually help save some sun as we were at 24,000 sun 20 flags in, so clearly the gloom shrooms helped out in some capacity here. Unfortunately, the defense was still rather weak against bucket of zombies. Target zombie spawning zombies in the water cannot be stopped by umbrella leaves as a whole. Because of several consecutive flags of bucket of zombies, I lost a bunch of sunflowers from flag 26 to 30, ending with only 22,000 sun to work with at the start of flag 30. 22,000 seems absurdly a lot to work with, but with Zombonis in the next two flags, this stockpile of sun is certainly going to be necessary since Zombonis are so costly to defend with the setup. Not only do we have to constantly plant blowovers to push them back when we don't have ice room, it's also really hard to keep planting taunts at the same time against diggers. Overall, a 2,000 sun loss in two flags translates to us only barely making it to the 50th flag at this rate, since the next two flags had Zombonis again. And I would be right in my prediction since by the end of Flag 34, we only had a bit under 18,000 sun to work with, so we're going to need at least to get some flowers back to safely maintain a good reserve of sun. Zambonis come again in the next two flags, so it definitely was tough even trying to get up some flowers, but thankfully planting just a few more sunflowers helps us not lose this much sun. Flag 37 to 38 was kind of tough with a lot of Giga Gargantuars, but we managed to maintain not losing any sun, so I'll take it as a win here. However, what I didn't know was that the end was very near because of a deadly mistake I was about to make in the next few minutes. You see, Zambonis usually freeze plants around them, but the chilling plants are immune to being frozen. The problem? Well, I planted a Doomshroom thinking I was like planting an Ice Shroom, and unfortunately, we just didn't have any other instance back yet in our seeds. Me messing up my Doom Shroom, I desperately tried to save it by planting an Imitator Ice Shroom, but by the time the Ice Shroom was ready, it's too late. The Zambonis had already made it to the third column, crushing our melon bolts, marking the end of the run right here as it was impossible to recover from this now. 
just one bad decision in Bruner Mode EX Plus Survival Endless is all it takes to go from being able to defend to completely lost. Not even 15,000 Reserve Sun can save us in any way. Frankly, I realized that the Gloom Shrooms weren't really helping, if at all, and if anything, having more space to plant an instant kill would just be more beneficial later on. I returned to my original setup, and unsurprisingly, I was able to mass 26,000 sun by the 25th flag, so I was right in my guess that it was more so about the efficient spending of instants. I thought I was doing well until flag 29 to 30, which became the most disastrous two flags in history. I started off with 21,000 sun, which is plenty high, but this was soon to be gone. Soon after the 29th flag, two target zombies simultaneously spawned a newspaper zombie in the water, which was originally not going to be a problem. But then, it happened. It was at this moment that he knew. Yup. Catapult zombies. Not just one of them, three of them to crush three lanes instantly, unblocking a newspaper zombie's pumpkins and letting it take out our cop cannon. I was absolutely devastated as the cop cannon was an important asset in helping us save on instant kills and now we're going to be struggling to even stay alive, having to constantly plant lovers. This was absolutely a nightmare scenario, leading to us losing literally 5,000 sun in just two flags of time. I still had to rebuild back everything that was lost and use Grey Flusters in the front. I decided I want to rebuild step by step instead of going all in, so flag 31 to 32 was me using Grave Busters and planting kernel bolts. However, this meant that we were playing with half the sun producers, as I didn't bring sunflower to regenerate our sun reserves. By the end of these two flags, I managed to remove all the graves, repair all the tall nuts, and replant kernel pulse. But we were losing 5,000 sun every two flags and on track to lose soon, with only 10,000 sun left now. Just before I thought I was going to be getting back sunflowers, Giga Gargantuars and Bucketus decide to show up again, so it looks like we're going to be losing sun again. Thankfully though, no catapult zombies spawned at the top of our plants this time around, and we were able to manage to lose only 2,500 sun, these two flags, and also replant our cop cannon. This meant that I was finally able to replant some flowers at flag 35 to 36. However, the Zombodies in these two flags were absolutely devastating still and managed to crush almost all the tall nuts. We weren't even turning a profit at this point even with catapult zombies in the level, so the situation is now looking dire with bare bones defenses only. With Buckethead Zombies and Zombonis coming again, this was looking extremely bad since Digger Zombies were also here so saving our Tall Nut is more important than ever now. I had to spend a tremendous amount of instant kills but we managed to survive these two flags, ending with only 2200 sun left now. With only that much sun left, bringing Sunflower was mandatory, but it's too late. The Zombonis start making it through too much and even begin freezing our Sunflowers. With masses of football zombies infiltrating, it seems impossible to consider we have only 1,000 sun going into the next two flags. And with Bucketheads as well as Zombonis, this is certainly the end. This was completely hopeless as by the end of the 42nd flag, not only did almost all our sunflowers die, but also a melon pole and we basically have nothing left. With that in mind, this is now completely over, and we're going to need to find something even more reliable to try and make it past 50 flags now. Absolutely devastated once again, I decided to take a break to try this again another day before trying again because by this point, it's getting ridiculous. Losing hours of progress at once made me feel horrible. I set out to make it right once and for all to squeeze out as much sun as possible as early on as possible. So, I decided to try and do just that by filling up to the 8th column with sunflowers. The slight delay in planting tallness is risky, but we will lose less time if we lose early compared to when we lose late, so it's worth the risk here. This little bit of extra income was short-lived due to pole vaulters entering in the 5th flag very quickly forcing us to set up at least a tall nut in every ground lane. However, I still managed to get away by having some flowers everywhere else, including the water lanes, and managed to greet a ton of sun early on when the waves are still relatively easy. The next two flags had newspaper zombies, however, with the relatively low density compared to the later waves, we can get away with only one column of tall nuts and a bit more here to greet more. We end the 8th flag with 11,500 sun, which is easily the most sun I've farmed up by this point. The next two flags were just dancing zombies, screen doors, dolphin riders, and gargantuars, so this imitator item easily gets us past this level, ending off with 16,000 sun reserve. This greed is quite immaculate as we still haven't needed to get our second column of tallness yet, providing us with much more sun than we usually do with a few extra sunflowers. Even with Digger Zombies, I got away by not planting an additional column of Tall Nuts, and easily end off Flag 12 with 22,000 sun in the bank already, so this was looking rather nice. 
But it next to flags, it's getting a bit too dense, so I have to finally get my second tall nuts in every row to block off newspaper zombies and football zombies. With no zombonies or buckethead zombies or gargantuars, this was a fairly easy two flags as we easily end off flag 14 with 26,000 sun. This was very good progress as last time we only got 24,000 sun by 25 flags, so we are about 10 flags ahead of our last run by just having one additional column of sunflowers. Fast forward to flag 16, the last bit of optimization this time is with our instant of choice. Instead of cherry bomb, Marigold is the obviously better instant plant as it slashes zombies health down by 75%, making it extra effective against gargantuars. Playing optimally, we easily end off flag 16 with 31,000 sun, by far the most sun that we've ever attained in Endless. Unfortunately, the next two flags are Bucketheads, which were soon to destroy a load of our defense. Very quickly, Bucketheads take out several twin sunflowers as well as our tall nuts. Thankfully though, we didn't lose really that many sunflowers as we still end up maintaining a sun profit at the end of these two flags here. The next few levels were all pretty easy and letting us turn our profit, with flag 19 to 20 getting us up to 34,000 sun at the end. We then ended up with 38,000 sun thanks to stalling with blowvers in flag 21 to 22. We lost a few sunflowers to zombonies in flag 23 to 24, but we still turned our profit with 39,000 sun in reserves. I didn't replant any sunflowers from flag 25 to 26 because there were more zombonies again, but we still managed to not lose sun here. Flag 27 to 28 however would be the turning point as Bucketheads make their return, and this time we lost even our umbrella leaf alongside half our sun production. We even have brave stones in the water blocking us. Things were not looking particularly great here as we needed much repairing after the target zombies put our defense in shambles. Unfortunately, the next two flags were even worse as more Bucketheads came again. Fortunately, I managed to actually maintain the remaining sun producers while defending them off. I seized the opportunity at flag 31 to 32, where without bucket of zombies, I can bring Grave Buster to free up some much needed space for our defense. I managed to do just that, but depleted quite a lot of reserve sun in a lot of instants, and these two flags bring us back down to 40,000 sun only. Thankfully, no bucket has showed up in flag 33 to 34, so I was able to bring some flowers to try and turn a profit. However, I was unable to do so as I still need to plant a lot of pumpkins to properly protect up our sun production again, so by the end of the two flags, I only had 29,000 sun to work with. Flag 35 to 36 looks pretty easy, but then came the incident again. I was hugely underestimating the power of Zambonis despite my constant fear for them, and disaster struck again. I instantly got my Doomstream frozen again just before it was about to detonate, and this was absolutely devastating as Zambonis basically just crushed about half our entire defense. Without even tallness to stop newspaper zombies, we experienced our first melon pot loss off the run, and any attempt in trying to recover from this seems completely out of the conversation. Nevertheless, I persisted onwards to try and beat this without much of our defense on the bottom, and somehow, I was able to hold off the zombies temporarily here at the bottom. Oh, and I cannot thank the PvZ gods enough for somehow how easy the next two flags were going to be. With the only major threat being the digger zombies, I was able to bring all melon pot, sunflower, and twin sunflower at once to try and recover from my losses. I am also astonished by how this was even possible. We managed to recover from a completely dead loss position and still have 21,000 sun to work with for the remaining 12 flags to beat. With our sun production back in full force, I was able to beat 39 to 40 with just simple imitator ice cream cycle. And again with flag 31 to 42, even turning a profit of 2,000 sun throughout the level this late into endless thanks to catapult zombies showing up again. 43 to 44 had bucket at zombies. Thankfully, we did not take too much damage, but it's still rather troublesome as an amphibious pole vaulter actually took out our cattail. Regardless of our losses, we still needed to keep bringing Imitator Ice Shrimp to stall as long as possible to survive as many flags as possible. With more Bucketheads on 45 to 46, the end is near. The Digger Zombies have started breaking through the last of our tallness by now, and combined with the power of Bungie Ambushes, they took out the majority of our last of producers. Thankfully, we lived onto our highest record yet, and now we're onto flag 47 to 48. With even more Bucketheads coming our way, it's just a matter of time until every last of producer is dead. And I would be right to think that, because by the end of these two flags, Gargantuars from Bungie Ambushers have basically destroyed the entirety of our front lines here. However, this was the final stretch. With only two more flags to go, this was looking like it was going to be possible to survive 50 flags after all of the torment we have been through. To end it off with a blast, the last two flags of the challenge combines Giga Gargantuars, Zambonis, Diggers, Newspapers, and Bucketheads all together, creating the most destructive attack yet. With Giga Gargantuars now spawning on the first wave of the level, this was the true test of the hardest spawn rate in Brutal Mode EX+. However, the funny part is that the usually extremely threatening Zombonis no longer seem to be that dangerous when there are basically no plants left for it to freeze or crush. We managed to fend off the newspaper zombies early on with just pumpkins, but only barely. Only two more pumpkins now separate newspaper zombies from our artillery. 
I desperately keep trying to use Blowvers to push back any infiltration of Bungie ambush zombies and try to keep our melon pots alive just barely. And we've done it. There's the 50th flag. With two more ice rooms ready in our seed selection, this was it. The end of the 50 flag challenge in Brutal Mode EX+. Our final defense was in complete shambles, but it still managed to make it past all 50 flags of Endless, and it's insane how we went from dying on the 5th flag every run to reaching here. So the answer is yes. You can indeed survive up to the maximum spawn rate of Bruno Mode EX Plus's Survival Endless, but still, you can't survive indefinitely like a normal PvZ. Next time, we'll be getting through all the secret mini games of Bruno Mode EX Plus first to explore plant evolutions in Bruno Mode EX Plus, which will enable us to survive indefinitely in Survival Endless. Or will they help us at all? Remember to subscribe to stay tuned, and thank you to our channel members for supporting the RCCS channel. For now, have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.